good evening to you again. And uh, I'm on a four-part series on uh, four anchors for the storms of life. And so let's get right into it, and, and I believe that this will bless you. Uh, the book of Acts, chapter 27, and verse, uh, beginning with verse 27, I'm going to do a, just a quick, uh, a short review of what we got into on part one and part two. Uh, the, book, the book of Acts 27 and beginning with verse 27 out of the New Living Translation. About midnight on the 14th night of the storm, as we were being driven across the Sea of Adria, the sailors, uh, since land was near, they dropped a weight line and found that the water was 120 feet deep. But a little later, they measured again and found it was only 90 feet deep. At this rate, they were afraid we would soon be driven against the rocks along the shore. So they threw out four anchors uh, from the back of the ship and prayed for daylight. So uh, I titled this message, The Four Anchors for the Storms of Life. We found out, number one, uh, is uh, we need to anchor out the Word of God into the storm of life. That is the word. Believe in the Bible. Uh, return back to the word of God and then let it be our standard. And number two, we got into the next anchor. We need to anchor. Uh, we need the anchor of a Bible-based family again. The first institution God started was a man and woman. So we talked about the family. We need that family atmosphere back into our homes. And, and next, uh, which will be uh, tonight, I'll be talking about anchor number three. We need to return to respect and honor God's plan in the world. And that plan, of course, is the local church. Uh, John 10, 27, God says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. So uh, a sheep needs a sheepfold. I know a lot of churches are now beginning to open up uh, right now, and praise God for that. But you know, Psalms 23, verse 1, with every local church, there is an under-shepherd. Remember, Jesus is the great shepherd, the chief shepherd, the good shepherd. He has under-shepherds all over the world pastoring their churches and uh, so Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So a, a shepherd is, is to help you be safe during your life on earth. A, 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 a focus, when we focus on the local church, the Bible calls, it's, it's a place of refuge. And um, Psalm 73 beginning with verse 23 in the New Living Translation. Yet I still belong to you. You hold my right hand. You guide me with your counsel, leading me to a glorious destiny. God is using in these last days an anchor for the body of Christ. And every member of the body of Christ needs that anchor to help them in their life experiences. And that anchor, the third anchor, is the anchor of the local church. You know, Hebrews 10, 25, not forsaking the assemblings of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. We are blessed to be in the USA. We are blessed to be here in our nation. A lot of countries, you, you, you cannot have a local church to go to. You have to go underground or someplace. But thank God we're blessed here, the opportunity to have that anchor in our lives, the local church. 
Since he is our shepherd, we have been called out and called unto. We've been called out. You have been called out and called unto. We have been called out of the darkness. And then we have been called uh, into his marvelous light. So uh, we have been called uh, unto his eternal or into his eternal glory. So the church is alive and well. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ is alive and well. You know, uh, Saul or Paul, when he came against the church, Jesus took it personally because it's his church. You know, even though Paul was, a, a, a Saul or Paul was a chosen vessel under God, at the beginning he was against the church. Matter of fact, Acts chapter 9, verse 4, Paul, talking about Paul, and he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why per persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the priest against the pricks. You know, when people in the world, when they go against the church and slam the church, Jesus take it, takes it personally. You're going against God. You're going against God when you go against his church. The Bible says the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. And, and, and so uh, Matthew chapter 25, verse 40 and the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Insomuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, you have done it unto me. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye curse, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. See, we cannot go against God's church and expect to go to heaven. You won't do it. When you go against the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going against kingdom. The Bible says, how can one kingdom stand against another kingdom? Kingdom don't fight against kingdom. But the devil will fight against the kingdom of God. But we win every time. You have to be careful of what you say about his local church. Always speak well of churches because all the local churches is 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 wanting to glorify hopefully glorify jesus and help people to get better and live better you know his church is called the house of prayer his church cast out devils his church lay hands on the sick and they shall recover his church binds up the brokenhearted his church delivers the captives the gates of hell like i said will not prevail against his church. Another translation says, the powers of the internal region shall not be able to overpower the church. And, and thank God, the extension of the local church, everyone needs a local body to attend to. That's the feeding ground. That's the major feeding ground for believers. And for you to have a home church, you have that satisfaction inside that you do have a home church and that you do have a shepherd that's watching over you in that local flock that God has ordained, anointed to watch over you and to pray for you. So no matter what church you go to, thank God for that local church. The privilege and the honor to have that anchor in your life. Right in the midst of the storm, you got a local church. Amen. And it's something that you may be going through some things and you go to that local church and it so happened. You thought, man, he must have, he knows everything what's going on in my life personally. See, God knows what's going on. He'll use an under shepherd to f feed the word of God into your heart and say things that will help you in the storm, during the storms of life. You know, the benefits of a, of a home church is uh, it, it is an extended uh, family. Amen. 
It, it, it is a place to connect with others. You need that connection with other believers. It is a place to learn. It's a place to serve. It is a place of accountability. We all need accountability. It is a place to, to praise and, and, and worship God together. We need that togetherness as a local body. It is a place for the sheepfold to be under a, a, a shepherd. Therefore, it is a place of safety. This local body, the local church, is an extended is an extension of God's love to his family. God so loved the world, yes, that he gave his only begotten son. But he so loved the church that he gave gifts unto all the local churches, the gifts of shepherds. Amen. Thank God. It's an honor and a privilege to be a shepherd that God has anointed men and women to do. It's a place to attend. It's a place to serve. And matter of fact, it is a place to take your tithes and offerings. The tithes and offerings belongs in your local church. You should never use the tithes and offerings for your own benefit. You should never use, I mean, the tithe. You should never use your tithe for college. You should never use your tithe for businesses. You should never use your tithe. Your tithe belongs to that local church where you attend faithfully because that's how your local church is run. Because the tithes that you give and offerings that you give takes care of all the salaries, takes care of all the bills. And but praise God at Living Word Church, we are blessed here because we have a lot of people that support this ministry with their tithes and offerings, and we really appreciate that. The the importance of a local church, I'm talking about the third anchor in the storms of life. You know, I, I don't know about you, but as, if I was just a member, not, not a shepherd or a pastor, I would be most miserable to be out there without a local church. I would feel alone by myself. But when you attend a church and you, you have a pastor, have other leaders that's with you, working with you, and you, and you go into church together, it fills that vacancy in your heart that you need that connection. So a, a, the importance of a local church is a place of refuge. It's a place of feeding. It's a place to flourish. And what does the Bible say about a local church to flourish? Matter of fact, Psalms 92 and verse 13 says, Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing, or they shall be blessed, prosperous, and flourishing. See, that's God's will. God is a giver. He gives local churches. And God knew that when the church come together, he needs the church. Because he knew that one shepherd cannot feed the whole body. So he divided different places all the world, started ministries, and put shepherds over them after his own heart. And so thank God for that. Flourish. Uh, means this. It means, I have a few definitions of that. Uh, to flourish means to, to, to succeed, to achieve success. It means to prosper. It means to grow vigorously. It means to gain in wealth and possessions. And, and, and the local body in the flourish in, in a church that is uh, the teaching the uncompromising word of God that's teaching all the blessings that we have. But see, if a shepherd don't know the blessings, how can he teach the blessings? Thank God it's so important that you need to pray for all the pastors. That God will teach them and help them to teach the full gospel of truth. Because in this church that God has set up, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ... Healing is there and available. Prosperity is there in the local church, in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Miracles are there. Deliverance is there. Wisdom is there. Joy is there. You belong there. You belong in that local church. 
And if you are listening to the sound of my voice, and maybe if you don't have a home church, I want to encourage you, no matter where you are, find a church that you know will help you in the storms of life. Because to live without a local church is to live without that anchor. God has set up the local churches. Don't let no one t tell you any difference that you don't have to have a home church. Yes, you need that church. You don't need that church uh, to get saved. You can be saved anywhere in your home. You can receive Jesus as Lord. See, going to church does not make you a Christian more than going to McDonald's makes you a Big Mac or going to a garage makes you a car. Going to church does not make you a Christian, but it helps you to be a better Christian if the Word of God is being taught there uncompromisingly. We need to hear the Word of God. Because a local church, I'm talking about the third anchor that we're, we're talking about, is uh, we need that anchor of the local church. It's a place of direction. It's a place of instructions. It's a place of inspiration and it's also a place of correction. See, we need those. We need uh, teaching in a church. We need teaching, and we need both preaching and teaching. But we need to have the, that direction, instruction, and inspiration and correction. See, God has set up the local church. You can learn from anyone in the whole world that's teaching the Word of God. But your greatest feeding that you'll get is from your pastor. No matter what church you go to, if you're a pastor preaching the Word of God, your greatest feeding is right there because God's going to put into your pastor's heart things that you need, amen, in that local flock. So his church is a lively church and not a, a dead church. Alive with the Word of God. You know, in, in this church you attend, you need to find out who God is and what he has and what he can do. That is so true. You need to find out who God is, what he has, and what he can do. Then you need to know who the Heavenly Father is and who the enemy is and who you are in him, who you are in Christ. We need to know who the Father is. You need to know who the enemy is, that he's the one that steal, kill, and destroy. And then you need to know who you are in Christ. A lot of people don't know who they are in Christ. So it's our responsibility as ministers to teach them all the doctrines of the Word of God, who you are in Christ. And what about the ministry of the local church? There's, uh, there's times that you may go to your local church and, and hear preaching. Uh, uh, preaching is, is, to, uh, is a message to proclaim, to declare, to expound, to exhort, and that's preaching. And, and sometimes you may go to church and you, you hear teaching. Well, what it means to teach, it means to show how to do something. It means to train, to guide. It means to instruct, it means to direct. It means to inform, to enlighten, that is to teach. And sometimes an under-shepherd that God has called to be a, over a flock, sometimes he may be in a service and that anointing will be upon him to preach a stem winder. Praise God. The, the anointing might be upon him just to enlighten, to teach, and to show how to walk in faith. And I like it sometimes. I believe there's a treach anointing where you can teach and preach at the same time. I love, I love doing that. So thank God for the word. See, a, a local church and the pastor is an anchor for you and your family. You need that. You need, no matter what church you attend, you need to speak very highly of the church you attend. When your children are with you, you don't ever speak negative of your church. You shouldn't speak negative in any way. But the kids need to have a good respect for the house of God, like David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. You know, uh, being a shepherd, you got to understand, uh, on a, uh, see, a shepherd of a flock, in, in the natural, 
a shepherd uh, with a staff. He's on two legs. He stands way above the sheep. The sheep has four legs. And so the shepherd that's watching over the sheep, he can see things that the sheep can't see sometimes. He can see the wolf approaching over the fence. And that sheep cannot see it, can't discern him. But he has that anointing to see things ahead of time. And he knows what to give to flock when it comes to a message or whatever. He sees things. And so therefore you got to understand you need to, you need to pray for your pastor. Pray for the shepherd that he'll speak things and see things he needs to see. So he'll know exactly what the church needs to hear along certain times of the word of God. You know, uh, his job as a pastor, he is now, I have a list of things here I think is very interesting. His job uh, is, uh, you know, uh, I like what Brother Hagin said one time years ago. He said, there's a lot of truck drivers needs to be pastors. And there's a lot of pastors needs to be truck drivers. You have to be called to do what you're called to do. Let everybody do what they're called to do. Don't try to be a truck driver. That's not your, that's not your expertise. Don't try to be a pastor because you want to be one. You better be called to be one. So therefore, when you go to home church, make sure you have a church that you know without a doubt that your shepherd is handpicked by God to be over you. Because a shepherd, his job is to comfort the agitated sheep. His job is to search out the lost sheep. His job is to restore the soul of the tired sheep. To carry the broken sheep, bind up the hurt sheep, feed the hungry sheep, gather the dispersed sheep, deliver the captive sheep, guide the directionless sheep, help them make the right decisions, settle down the frightened sheep, relate to the sheep, care for the sheep, provide for the sheep, watch the sheep, know the sheep. Lay down his life for the sheep. Give to the sheep. Love the sheep. Pray for the sheep. Correct the sheep. All these things, all these things are so very important. So uh, an anchor of the, uh, uh, the third anchor is the anchor of a local body. Remember number one, we need to anchor out the word of God. Get the word of God back into your life. Keep walking in faith. You need the teaching of the Word of God. And you need that teaching not only from other ministers, they're good. But you need that teaching out of the flock that God had put you into. When God puts you in that flock, he knows exactly what you need for this particular time. Amen. And then uh, number the next uh, anchor is the, uh, we need to anchor of the Bible-based family again. We, need, we talked about the Word of God. We need to anchor the Word of God into the storms of life, be the doer of the Word of God, not hearers only. And we need to have that Bible-based family again. And we, we talked about that in the last one. And, and, and of course, uh, this evening, we need to return and respect and honor God's plan in the world. And that plan is for the, the local church. So God is, is really, uh, I, I believe, moving on the hearts and lives of, of people, the body of Christ, to get back to where they belong, to get back into their churches and be what God has called it and anointed them to be. Those times will come, maybe you cannot attend. But I tell you what, when the time says, let's go, then you need to go to church because that's one of the anchors. Your children should never wake up in the morning and ask you this question. Hey, Mom, Dad, are we going to church? You say, no, don't you ask me that because we are going to church. I believe that. I believe that. That being in church is so very important. My wife's mother, uh, mother she's, she's in heaven right now. And my wife, Charlotte, told me that in their family had uh, this five girls and one boy. And all six children, uh, her mother made them go to church. Of course, her dad was not really going to church. He would stay home. He would 
say, hey, won't let, let him stay home. She said, no, his name was Charlie. No, Charlie. No, Charlie. No, 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 no. They're going to church. I mean, they went to church. That's those days. They went to church every Sunday morning, every Sunday night, every Wednesday night. If there was a revival, they went every. There was, she was so convinced that the local church is so important for her children. She would not let them stay home unless they were in a fever. They sit. They went to church. If they had homework, do it in church. If they're sleepy, be at church. You got to be at church regardless. And she made them go to church. And sometimes, you know, company will come over to see them, maybe on a Sunday. And, and, and uh, maybe a Sunday afternoon, she said, well, you know, um, uh, y'all welcome to stay, but uh, me and the kids, we're going to church tonight. Y'all welcome to go with us, you know. Well, that'll stop people from coming visit you on a Sunday afternoon, especially if you have church that night. But see, my mother-in-law, she was sold out to the local body. She loved God. She prayed for her kids. And all of the kids, including my wife, all of the girls and, and one boy, all is in church serving God. Not made to go. They want to go because they were trained while they were young. That's, this is important. She had that anchor in her life. And that anchor in her life of the local church, being faithful to that church and that pastor, all her kids is now serving God. Now, she's in heaven and uh, my father-in-law, Charlie, of course, he got saved, and he's in heaven. So I want to encourage you on this third anchor, make sure that you keep the local church priority as you do God in your family, in your life. We love you. God bless you. I, always want, I want to say this before we go again. Thank you for your financial support to this ministry. And if you attend another church, I want to encourage you to be a faithful financial support to them, not to us, because I'm not your pastor. Your, your tithes don't, don't belong here. It belongs in your local church. But if you are a member of Linwood Church, then, of course, go ahead and listen to the very end how you can support this church. And This church exists because of the faithfulness of your support. We love you and God bless you. And remember, you are the head, not the tail, above and not beneath, and cannot and will not be defeated. Jesus is Lord, and you're going someplace to manifest your goodness and your kindness to others. God bless you. Praise God. Thank you for watching Living Word Church online and being part of our eFam. If you joined us on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel. And if you joined us on Facebook, please like the page so you don't miss any future events or services. There are a couple ways you can support this awesome ministry. One, by sharing this video with friends and family and getting the word out. Two, by making a financial donation by clicking the Give Now button. This will help us to continue to support our community and do all God has called us to do. Thank you again for watching. God bless.